One and I think we can start. Hello and welcome to the webinar series on just transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. This is a first webinar dedicated to the just transition in the Western Balkan and Ukraine, organized by the Initiative for Coal Regions in Transition in the Western Balkans in Ukraine. Today's webinar is on planning for a just transition in light of energy insecurity. My name is Salma Shehovic. I'm a program manager at the FES SOE, working on a climate change and just transition matter. To my great fortune, um, I'm supported by colleagues from the initiative, namely Irina Novak and Victoria Wisa, who will be handling chat box function as well all the other technicalities. Um, this brings me to the housekeeping rules. Thank you, Victoria. This webinar is in a view only mode. It is recorded. If you have questions, please do post them in a chat box function and Irina will bring them forward later together with the other questions we received ahead of the webinar. In case you don't feel like uh, going publicly with your questions, please feel free to send them to the um, address shown at the site. Um, the topic is trending well on all social media accounts, so to say. We received nearly 300 um, registrations, which is uh, obviously a good sign of your interests or the importance of this topic, but also probably because we have a great line of speakers joining us today, but for the rest of the series um, as well. Um, to make this as inclusive as possible, once again, we invite you to post your questions in a chat uh, box. Now, before we dive into discussing these topics and hear from our uh, panelists, we're going to hear from our introductory speaker, Ms. Katrina Hartman, who's joining us from DG Energ. European Commission, specifically Unit on Consumers, Local Initiatives, and Just Transition. So, Ms. Hartman, thank you very much for joining us, and over to you. Thank you very much, Selma. Um, dear colleagues, speakers, and also participants, uh, welcome to the first webinar of our series on Just Transition, um, hosted by yeah, the Initiative for Coal Regions in Transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. As uh, Sam already mentioned, my name is Katarina Hartmann. I uh, have the pleasure to oversee this initiative from the Commission side at the Directorate General for Energy. Uh, this initiative aims to bring coal regions in the Western Balkans and Ukraine together with coal regions uh, within the EU to share experiences, lessons learned, and also exchange knowledge on just transition, and of course advance the discussion on the topic uh, in general. Our goal is to support the coal regions in our neighbor country, neighborhood countries uh, on their journey to coal phase out and deliver it in a fair and just way. Uh, this ambition has, of course, gained even more importance after Russia's forceful invasion of Ukraine last year. That has also led to the ongoing energy crisis. Um, last May, the EU has therefore launched its strategy for an EU external energy engagement uh, with the aim to reduce overall energy demand, to boost energy savings, uh, energy efficiency and in particular the development of renewables and overall support Ukraine to build back better. Um, similarly, with the economic and investment plan, the EU aims to support its close partners and neighborhood countries in the Western Balkans in their economic recovery and convergence uh, with the EU. A just transition is one of the key pillars of this investment plan which is why I'm very, very happy to see so much interest in this first webinar um, and hope to see many of you again for the next five sessions that are planned uh, on topics like stakeholder engagement and opportunities for financing the energy transition and many more. Uh, I would now like to thank our speakers for sharing their insights and wish you all that what is shared here today will spark interesting thoughts and discussions. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Hartman, also for being so mindful of time and for bringing me to um, th this part on the objectives of the webinar. Um, we, on one hand, uh, want to address security of supply and the energy transition and how the two interlink uh, or intertwined and what are the most pragmatic ways to uh, achieve both. 
That's on one hand. On the other hand, we want to address the coal regions in transition and their approaches that they are taking or could take uh, to achieve, just like you said, um, just transition and obviously to reap the benefits um, of this transition. For this, we'll talk or first hear uh, presentations from Professor Mirza Kuslukic and Dr. Rumiana Grazeva later on. But uh, to make this um, as inclusive as possible and to feel the, the audience pulse, so to say, we're going to run a poll with two questions, which will um, appear on your screen. Please take some time to answer them. Your answers are anonymous, but it's a good impetus for um, the rest of the discussion, I think. So the first question is on the energy crisis. Will the current energy crisis speed up the energy transition in your country, slow down the energy transition in your country, not have any influence on the energy transition in your country, or simply, I don't know. Please take some 40 minutes, I say, is enough to answer this. And then we'll go with the second question. We'll go with the second question, Victoria, please. And the second question is on initiative. Who should take the initiative in the process? A, local authorities, B, regional authorities, the national authorities, the local communities and NGOs, or have others. Again, please take up to, let's say, 40 seconds max to answer this question. And as you can see, these poll questions also follow roughly the structure of our objective. No. Okay. Okay. And now I think I can see the results. Victoria, please. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. I'm very happy to see this. 75% of you think that the current energy crisis will speed up the energy transition in your country. Good. Thank you. The next one, please. Okay. And 55% of you think that national authorities should initiate the process. And only 4% of you think it should be the local authorities. Okay, this is going to be a nice discussion that we can definitely bring in later these results during the Q&A session at the end. For now, we can close this. Thank you all so much. Very, very much appreciate this. And now we can move on to the presentations by our distinguished guests, presenters. First, we'll hear from Professor Mirza Kushlovic, who doesn't need much of an introduction, but it's customary, so I'm gonna go ahead with it anyways. Mr. Mirza Kushlugic, Professor Kushlugic, is the president of the Reset Center for Sustainable Energy Transition, a think tank based in Sarajevo, Bosnia, Herzegovina. He's a professor emeritus at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of Tuzla. He also served as the permanent representative of Bosnia-Herzegovina to the UN mission in New York 
and was a member of several parliaments in Bosnia and Herzegovina. He is author of five books and over 50 scientific papers. His main research interests are in power systems planning and economics, as well as management of sustainable energy transitions. Quite topical, right? Um, his presentation today is on just transition, but coal regions perspective. Uh, before I hand it over to Professor Kushvigic, and another reminder, please post your questions in the chat box. Irina will manage them, and we will later bring them into the Q&A session. Professor Kushvigic, the floor is yours. Sama, thank you. Thank you for the kind uh, introduction, and uh, I would like to thank the Secretariat. I will call them Secretariat for the uh, project initiative for coal regions in transition in the Western Balkans in Ukraine, just for short. So when I was invited to participate in this webinar, uh, I had in mind to share with you the findings from the project that RESET is uh, currently coordinating in the Western Balkans. The project is called the uh, Repower uh, Western Balkans, and it's uh, intentionally uh, named uh, to be similar with the uh, Repower EU. So please, can I have the next slides? My short remarks will be on the following uh, topics. First was the state of the art of the discussion regarding coal regions in transition process in the Western Balkans with a focus on Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is uh, most familiar to me. Then uh, a sort of the dilemma that is being discussed among the expert community, uh, how to harmonize uh, coal phase out and energy security requirements. And uh, something that we will try to find out in the Repower West Tobacco projects in the drafts of uh, NECPs. And then I'll go to the second part, which is uh, just uh, planning, uh, just energy transition, and I will emphasize the importance of the bottom-up approach. So can I have the next slide, please? Uh, we do have uh, National Energy Climate Plans drafts submitted. Uh, they will be revised. In them, we can uh, see that uh, coal scale down. I don't call it phase out, but scale down process is somehow incorporated in the targets for the integrated NECPs. More in the recently adopted uh, targets uh, at the meeting of the Ministerial Council of the Energy Community than in the initial drafts. And we did have even prior to the crisis, uh, here I refer to the economic, uh, to the energy crisis, we did have uh, several even coal phase out intentions announced, more specifically North Macedonia, Montenegro, and recently some uh, indications in Serbia. But basically, what is happening or what has been happening for the last two years are internationally driven initiatives. We have EU initiative, which webinar is a part of. Then uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, there is the World Bank Just Transition Roadmap Project. And then EBRD uh, prepared Just Transition Diagnosis and Action Plan for the North Macedonia. This, this is important. This is important that the process is initiated from outside the region and outside of the countries. However, in the region, it is no more a taboo subject. Two years ago, three years ago, in some, some very important coal dependent countries, before the crisis, uh, coal phase out was a taboo subject. Uh, this crisis showed that uh, security of supply in the region cannot be provided just based on coal thermal power plants. So I think this is, a, this is a good beginning. Let's say it's a good beginning of putting the subject on agenda. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, however, whenever you go into such complex transition, with such complex change of the generation and a power system, and if you are coming out of the crisis, and if you are planning post-crisis, uh, recovery, and if you paid such a dear price, like many countries in the region paid in the last two years, then security of supply is a priority. And uh, the mantra uh, that security of supply is connected to the local resources and the local resources are coal is uh, something that is re-emerging again. However, when we put that in context of the adopted decarbonization targets until 2030, 
uh, within the energy community uh, uh, NECP targets, then we see the real challenge. And the real challenge is how to coordinate coal phase down, eventual coal phase out, with the renewable scale up. At the same time, preserving or improving after this crisis, security of supply. And this is a complex technical, uh, political, economic question. And I would like at the very beginning to emphasize this is a challenge that we'll be discussing properly in the next 10 years, because we don't have all the necessary answers today. But we do have clear indications where we should go. And we do have enough answers and technologies to start this process. So I think more and more uh, decarbonization, uh, energy transition, call it whatever you want, is a process that is somehow present even in the public. And the problem that we are facing at the moment, it is with the opponents of the process presented as imposing process from mainly uh, European Union. Can I have the next slide, please? At the same time, we have, and the crisis have shown that we have such a dramatic decline of the coal regions and the cones, especially in Bosnia and Herzegovina. It, it has started 10 years ago, and it's dramatically visible today. So the people in the coal regions understand that there might not be long-term, not even the mid-term future in a coal-based economy in their communities. So what they are at the moment searching for is a feasible post-coal future. And we have to tackle the problem. We have to define that future, that vision, very soon. And it has to be accepted by the local inhabitants. Because unless it's done very soon, the economic decline that has already started will lead uh, to the uh, process that the best people of the working age would leave the local communities. And then we will have uh, dramatic demographic challenges in the region that has already had demographic challenges, not only connected to the declining uh, economy of the coal regions. So that's why I think uh, regions need to be ready now. And that should be as soon as possible on the agenda of local councils, local stakeholders, not just of technocrats at the national level who are coordinated with the secretariat, the energy community, and who are talking about this process. Because social economic transformation of the local communities, which are dependent on coal that has shown in Europe and especially in the region will be very dramatic process. I would like to share with you two municipalities from the region where I come from. It's a Tuzla canton or Tuzla coal region. One of them is Banovic and one of them is Juvenice. Banovic is a mono-industrial town. It was built on a coal mine. 70% of employed are directly and indirectly connected to the coal mine. They know there is a problem, but in such an environment, it's very difficult to start from coal phase out. Even if you say 2050, even if you say something which is very, very far away, they feel that there is a need for restructuring, but they still think that the pillar of their economic activity in a foreseeable future will be coal. On the contrary, we have another neighboring municipality, Zivinice, which has gone through the process of restructuring in the last 20 years because the major industry in the town was not coal mine, but was a wood processing company. So they know that it is possible to go from one major employer to industrial parks, to uh, business areas, to many, many small companies. So they know it is possible to restructure. And I would like to share with you my proposal to the secretary. It's very good to see what are examples of successful transformations of coal regions in Europe? But it might be good to see what are good examples of social economic transformation of mono industrial cities, which does not necessarily have to be coal within the region. It's closer, it's the same mentality, and it gives the people uh, idea or in, uh, uh, shows them it is possible. Can I have the next slide, please? I have seen your answers that the national government's top-down approach should be a uh, priority. And I connect that to the mentality of the region. We are, we are in the region uh, accustomed to big projects, uh, big solution to the, pro to, to, to the big problems, 
And it's, of course, such a complex area uh, like power sector or coal that national governments have to be the leaders of the process. I think they have to be involved. Uh, they have to be partners, but I think the leaders should be those who are mostly affected. I think local communities led by the local governments, councils, not just mayors, because they feel what has already happening. Uh, just to share with you one uh, remark, when I became uh, uh, convinced that they understand. For the last four years in Tuzla region, uh, secondary schools for the minors uh, enroll no more than uh, uh, five students. So no more. My grandfather, my father was a coal miner. I'm coal miner and my kids will work in the coal mining industry. So uh, we have to be very frank with those local communities, but they have to understand. We have to provide them support, technical, because that's what they are lacking. Financial support must be solidly clear that will come. Of course, financial burden of the restructuring will come from the private companies who will invest in the new ventures. But building of the infrastructure is something that we have to count on uh, grants. I'm very, very uh, glad that uh, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Grozeva, will share with us something from Bulgaria because very, very much uh, interesting what has been going on. I just would like you to think about restructuring of the biggest coal region in, in Europe and Bulgaria without European Union support and try to imagine, is it possible? So can I have the next slide, please? I will try to, in the conclusions, give also some recommendations, which I would like to emphasize. They are basically the first finding of the Repower Western Balkan projects. We will have the results in June and uh, it will be publicly uh, available. Uh, when we started researching the subject, we found that there are three key phases that complex transitions in general have to be uh, uh, clearly understood. The first phase is accepting the necessity for a change. Let's say if I have to judge, it is 70% clear that it is must. The second phase is crucial. Okay, if there is no future, Nicole, what's the next? visible and acceptable future for the region and what are the plans for a change and then in my opinion we come to the third crucial phase which is based on the trust of all the players don't be sure that the local communities who are in such a dear economic circumstances because of mismanagement of electric power companies at least in bosnia and herzegovina trust upper layers that they were uh, provide a new future for them. So uh, we will probably have to go plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act this process. And that's only possible to be anchored if the local actors are involved. However, I very much welcome the international support. I very much welcome the initiative started by international actors. It is very important. Without technical and uh, firm financial assistance, especially in the first phase where uh, necessary business infrastructure for the economic development have to be developed. And I emphasize here, a new paradigm for the 21st century, not repeating uh, usual uh, toolboxes from the consultant companies. I uh, very much would like to discuss when we have the finding of the results, how this financial assistance should be provided. I don't think it should come on all from EU funds. Uh, there are many different ways and experience of the countries like Bulgaria show uh, if it's wisely used as a matching fund, could be a solid ways that the people will trust concept, will trust a plan, and then will be involved. Lest there will be opponents like at the moment are trade unions uh, uh, contrary to the uh, management uh, uh, of the public companies. Thank you for listening. And uh, I'm uh, here, glad to hear the other presentation and uh, to answer your questions if you have any. No, thank you, Professor Krishna. You're so perfectly in time. Um, and thank you for 
sharing your preliminary results, uh, I think they are important for any argument-based debates, but also for evidence-based um, policies that are hopefully to come. As a local and as someone who works on these topics, I can agree with you that it, the topic is no longer a taboo. I also agree that it should be locally driven, and I very, very much appreciate you bringing these social identities in and these psychological barriers and uh, just overall this human component to the transition. Um, we now move on to another expert who fortunately already been through this um, transition or mostly has gone through it. Um, from Bulgaria, we are joined by Dr. Rumiana Grozeva, an executive director of Stara Zagora Regional Development Agency. She's also a coordinating manager of European Digital Innovation Hub Zagore and a member of the board of directors of Industrial Zone Zagore. She holds a PhD in economics and has a sound experience in the field of regional economic development. Jumiana is uh, actively involved in the EU and national projects in Stara Zagora, a sustainable energy transition, as well as also unemployment and new technological um, introductions. She's also a part-time lecturer at the Sofia University and Trakia University. And today, Dr. Grozova will share with us valuable insight, I'd say, into the experiences of Stara Zagra region uh, when developing a just transition plan. Dr. Grozova, over to you. Thank you so much, Grozova. I have this um, opportunity to share the experience of Stara Zagra. Thank you very much for uh, what uh, uh, Mirza shared about the, uh, this process in Bosnia and Herzegovina because uh, it's always uh, very useful to hear from other regions, their practices, their experience, uh, their uh, success and their failures, and to learn from that. Uh, I'll start with the, the next slide, slide please. Uh, just some words for the for the agency. Uh, it's the uh, Sarasago Regional Economic Development Agency, NGO, as a legal entity established in 1995. It is part of USAID, and uh, by initiative of the municipality of Sarasago, its mission is to support the local authorities and businesses in their sustainable development. As members, uh, the agency has uh, all of uh, the municipalities from the from the region, Prague University, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Bulgarian German Vocational Training uh, Center. The next one, please. Uh, so you could can see now the, the region of Sarasagora, uh, where is actually located the Minimovica East complex, this uh, mining and term farm fund complex. The city is the sixth largest in Bulgaria. Um, about uh, 300,000 uh, inhabitants, uh, one of the biggest regions in uh, Bulgaria, uh, a part of uh, poles and term farm plants, variety of economic sectors are also uh, developed uh, here in the region, which actually would be a good base for this uh, transition from uh, dependencies from the coal and uh, uh, energy uh, based on, on coal. The next one, please. Economy, stable growth in the years before the pandemic actually based exactly on the uh, mining complex, Maritza East, and uh, uh, three main term farm plants located there, which also provide uh, uh, this um, high level of uh, regional GDP and uh, significant number of job places here in the region, both direct and indirectly uh, are related with the complex. After the pandemic, uh, significant drop in the GDP and employment rates uh, slowly recovered, but uh, especially after the beginnings of the war in Ukraine and uh, the uh, problem with the uh, security of supply, actually the prices, you all of us know very well that uh, the energy prices become very high and actually in, in this Almost a year period, term farm plants in the mining complex actually uh, have a very good benefits from this march in, in the prices. And actually, it stopped the discussion about the transition. All of these voices that we had have uh, both on local and uh, 
uh, national level that without code, without these local resources, uh, which are a part of the national security paradigm, uh, the, the, regional, the, the national economy uh, will, will stop uh, its functioning, will not be more competitive, and we need to keep this uh, security of supply based on exactly local resources, as Mr. said uh, about uh, the these voices that we have in each one region in Europe, which should make this transition. Never mind, it will be Poland, Germany, Bulgaria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, etc. Even in um, Kuzani, because we're collaborating very well with the Kuzani region, that kinds of voices are still on the table in the in the public uh, uh, area, uh, saying that the green energy and this transition, which is based on um, um, renewable sources of uh, energy and partly from on the uh, gas uh, supply uh, will not be sustainable uh, base for the development of the region in the next uh, decade. Next slide, please. Mm. So this is some uh, facts for the uh, minimum resources, uh, like the energy complex in Southeastern Europe, three lignite fire thermal power, power stations. Uh, one of them is, um, uh, owned by the uh, by the state. The other two are private uh, um, companies, um, so-called American companies here in in Bulgaria. The next one, please. So, when we started to develop our transition plan with the support of uh, consultants uh, selected by the European Commission, <coughs> uh, pardon me, uh, DG reform. Uh, actually, we have started with some. Um, uh data gathering analyzing them and preparing uh, the, the base for the the transition plan also uh identifying the the main um um advantages regional advantages that could be um stable uh foundation for the slowly and step by step uh leaving the security of uh, coast, of thermal power plants, security of drop places, uh, of uh, supplying of energy and looking for new opportunities for new drop places. You know that the, the social uh, crisis, the social um, measurement of the, of the transition is in uh, some uh, extent much more important than the economic one. Because talking about, it depends, but uh, there is, uh, a variety of uh, estimation how how much the place will be affected by the transition starting from 12,500 um, directly involved in the complex and uh, still uh, from 50,000 to 100,000 indirect job places also uh, affected by the by the transition which is a huge number of uh, of job places that would be affected. So started uh, preparing our distribution plan. We had uh, uh, in one room all the stakeholders uh, directly um, involved, trade unions, local authorities, businesses, academia. And for one year, we actually, it was exactly during the COVID uh, crisis, we, uh, we have worked very well together. Never mind that we had some different points of view uh, regarding how this transition should happen, when it uh, should start, when it should be completed. You know that the Bulgarian um, ambitious is uh, 2038, uh, the, the transition to be uh, completed. Uh, we discussed uh, really in partner, as partners, what and how should be done in order to have in one from one side the um, new job places enough to replace the the existing one in the uh, minimum replace complex and from the other uh, side uh, businesses which to be uh, sustainable enough in order to provide such uh, uh, growth of regional GDP and to provide the sustainable and uh, let's say green job uh, uh, places. Uh, after this year, we had a well-structured distribution plan. 
which covers uh, both economic and social uh, issue of the transition, uh, really based on the local resources. And we had also very good dialogue here in the, in the region between the local authorities, trade unions, businesses, um, academia was uh, also involved, NGO, NGO sector also. And uh, it looks like, looks like um, that the, 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 the transition is already negotiated between all of the stakeholders, even the national, authori uh, national authorities as the Ministry of Energy uh, was really involved in this process. And then just the war started and everything just stopped and came back. Um, even in, on, on level much more before this uh, discussion to be started in the middle of uh, 2018 here in the region. Now, uh, you know that the Bulgarian National Assembly, the, the last one that was uh, already, uh, mm, it's uh, uh, already uh, stopped, but they decided to start negotiating of National Recovery and Civilians Plan regarding this 40% um, goal to be reduced the uh, CO emissions, uh, which also stopped the process of the transition plan approving by the commission. Uh, as already uh, Mr. said, uh, the transition here in the region without the support of the European Union, the transition mechanism will, will not be possible because it's a huge amount of money, but not only the money, also the the governance mechanism is very, very important how this process should be uh, should be done because you know that here in the eastern and central part of Europe, when you're hearing this word transition, it reminds us what actually happened in, from the, the beginning of uh, this uh, 1990 to the moment. And people really need to, to trust in their government, never mind local or national, because in Bulgaria we have no regional level of um, uh, of governance. And uh, is it possible the local authorities to do some some useful step by themselves alone? No, it it will not be possible. In any case, we need the national partnership, national support also. Uh, what is the situation in the in the current moment? We still. We are waiting yet the the uh, caretake government to continue the negotiation with the individual about the, the transition funds, not only for Sarasagor, but also for other two uh, core regions in, in Bulgaria in order this uh, twin green and digital transformation to be um, really started and to be uh, successful for the region. Not been successfully for the moment, this discussion between the trade unions again, uh, um, local authorities in some uh, part and mainly the, the national level of stakeholders are involved. Here in the region, we had a lot of, uh, and we will have a lot of events focused on the, uh, the transition, repurposing of uh, uh, mining territories, how they should be utilized after the coal extractions. We already have approved a significant project for the region. One is for the creation of digital innovation of the Gora, which is focused on the um, green um, hydrogen, mainly clean hydrogen and green uh, and clean energy, and also mechatronics, uh, VR and AR. And the uh, other one is uh, it was presented uh, on 1st of March in uh, Brussels on high uh, level political events. It's for uh, uh, developing of um, small scale pilot, small scale pilot hydrogen valley here in, in the region which actually to be uh, the pilot one before the uh, lighthouse project D-Line uh, for clean hydrogen based, based industrial symbiosis to be started. Uh, and what is very important to say that the, the small scale pilot project is actually, uh, I hope, the successful public-private partnership, including the state on term plant plant, Marie C2. And uh, funding is uh, provided 50% uh, uh, by the uh, public sources and 50% uh, by the private uh, businesses, private. So we'll see if it could be a good uh, 
uh, good practice, good example how the transition could happen driving by the businesses because this and the initiative for the small scale hydrogen valley is actually derived on initiative of the businesses, regional business, not the regional uh, governor or local authorities or something like this. It's driving by the uh, regional businesses. The next one, please. So uh, I hope that I provide some uh, information how the process is here in, in the region, but the truth is that uh, in small countries, this process could not be driven exactly by the local authorities. The situation in Greece is the same. We discussed with colleagues there that actually the main driver is the national government and the process of uh, planning of this transition is uh, very much uh, centralized actually. And which once again demonstrate that the local authorities could not deal with this uh, process by themselves on. Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Grezzo. I think um, I just reached every moderator's dream. You know, everybody's speakers are sticking to the time. Chat is very active. So yeah, we are good to go uh, with the questions. But seriously, before that, thank you so much for mentioning or being so specific who of all the parties who participated in um, the just transition plans in developing that, and also for bringing in the importance of the governance of this um, tr transformation and transition. It, it's a topic uh, we will discuss in one of the webinar series. So yeah, we, we share um, that with you. Um, and now we can uh, go with the questions um, as Irina is filtering uh, the ones we received today uh, to match our topic. Um, so to say, in more details, I'm going to bring in uh, one of the questions we received ahead of the webinar. And because we are talking about today anyways about uh, the planning and uh, the designing and uh, etc., um, the question really fits in. So the question is on importance of clear targets in national strategies and plans. Professor Kuslugic question goes to you, but Dr. Grozova also to you. So again, please be mindful of time. Professor Kosovic, would you like to start? Thank you. Thank you, Selma, for the question. So <clears throat> here we are talking about material uh, obligations. Uh, unfortunately, we have experience with energy community about uh, material obligations regarding LCPD directives, which started with the strongly defining targets in the national energy re, uh, any, uh, uh, emission reduction plans. And uh, maybe due to the crisis, but I think uh, mainly due to the not fulfilling the criteria, we have uh, big problems with achieving the targets. However, I think the targets that are now being uh, agreed upon about the decarbonization should be put in the context of uh, carbon pricing and uh, CBA. So this is now not only a uh, region, and uh, I'm talking about the Western Balkans region and the Secretariat and the uh, Commission. Now it is a uh, European market and the market of the Western Balkans. So the targets should really be seen as uh, real material obligations. And uh, you cannot start any process. You cannot start any process unless you say, well, this is the, the end date. Of course, that date could be shifted, like in Germany. They discussed about 2038 for two years. Now they are voluntarily moving that due to the circumstances to 2030. Uh, why I'm saying this? We did have a poll survey in another project where we asked people, uh, experts in the region, when do you think uh, the coal will be stopped using for coal for power production in the region? So no more than 30% said before 2040. 30% said after 2050, regardless of the uh, obligations we have undertaken. So once, when you start discussing the date, whatever it is, I usually say 2040, 2045. I don't think any, any thermal power plant will survive more than 2045. Uh, then you start really thinking about it. And more important than final date is the traje trajectory. How do you reach it? We do have some experts in the area who say, yeah, 
uh, from 2045 to 2050, we will decarbonize power sector, but until 2045, we will work with the current uh, fleet of thermal power plants. So uh, targets also have intermediary targets and uh, very important thing for national energy climate plans is not just the targets for 2030, it's a trajectory to 2050. And that's a trigger, unless we have that accepted in the parliament, the, preferably in the law, then you are limbo. That's my, that's my uh, experience from what's going on in the discussion the last two years. Yeah. Thank you. And now I definitely see why you prefer the term coal slowdown as, a, as opposed to coal, coal phase out. Uh, Dr. Graza, would you like to comment on this question? What I could add is that actually the, the coal could be not shifted from coal to green energy for one night or for two months or in this manner. It should start really today. Uh, or even delay because it's not only only the the coal firing etc. We should think a lot for a lot of other uh, components which are components which are related with this process for the uh, energy grid also. Uh, it should be adapted for the much more uh, renewable energy sources because now it's it's not adapted for such kinds of energy. Uh, we should think about the building of this, uh, never mind it will be solar uh, parks or uh, onshore or offshore and, and et cetera. So really the, the goal, the goals are very important, but the, the, the trajectory is also very important because it could be pulled down the coast and creating the, the uh, uh, renewable energy and also the, the, the skills of uh, uh, workforce, not, but, when I'm talking about the, the skills, not only for people who will be, who will be directly uh, involved in the building of these new um, solar parks or wind parks, but also for people who should prepare this integrated project and should manage them, should implement them. Uh, I mean, the, the, the administrative capacity, again, which is very important in this process because Okay, we know that we should train workers, we know that we should build some uh, infrastructure, we know that we, we should uh, modernize our uh, energy uh, grid, but what about the managing capacity of all of these projects? They are huge, really, in the next decades. Not only to have the goals to uh, prepare training programs, to prepare uh, uh, hydrogen valleys, etc. Somebody should prepare and manage and monitoring and uh, really have uh, the the capacity to do that in the sustainable manner. What this is what I should uh, add actually. But for yeah. for the thank you, thank you so much. And in fact, a uh, part of your answers um, also reflects another question we received. Uh, but I'll go to that later. Now I'd like to use my role as a moderator and post probably my favorite question we received and it's about behavioral changes. The question says, what key behavior at the institutional community and personal level will need to change to successfully transition to new sources of energy? Professor Krusevich, would you like to start again, please? Well, that's a question for a dissertation. Uh, uh, I'll just put one uh, strategic point, uh, the region, the Western Balkan region uh, uh, has a history in the power sector, in energy sector of big projects, uh, the bigger, the better. Everyone wants to be exporter and the hub of energy. So the big changes in institutional, in mental, local, uh, structural transformation is that the new uh, paradigm of the smart grids that we are aiming for is not composed of the big project, but the small steps uh, where everyone have to be involved. And I emphasize we should start with our no regret strategy projects, energy efficiency, energy management, not just uh, the time against the hydrogen hubs or whatever, but people should start uh, being involved in the process and should really understand that the future energy and the power system will very much depend on their on their behavior, on their participation. 
that's uh, in RESET, we have uh, discussed this as a strategic orientation. So bottom up local energy transition is a priority where we have been working on changing the whole mentality of the approach. And of course you have ambitious local communities who wants to be self-sustained villages, self-sustained <laughs> islands or whatever. So uh, it's a good, it's a good to have that, to have that in range. But from the technical perspective, we are talking about very small economies. We are talking about countries that cannot be sustainable in the new modern uh, power system, which is based on variable renewable energy. So regional perspective, regional integration and integration of the region in Europe is a strategy. And here we still have a tendency of political stakeholders and even the public that uh, all solutions have to be based on the local, that uh, only optimization should be based on the trade. And uh, in that situation, we will not be able to make to make the transition smoothly or economically, or not, not, not at all. So I will repeat local and regional aspects. Cont contrary to the uh, current uh, country contained solutions. Thank you very much. Dr. Graza, would you like to comment on behavioral changes, especially again, since you mentioned all the stakeholders that took part in developing the Just Transition Development Plans in Bulgaria. Any tips from your experience? My experience, actually, I agree that the mindset of all of actors involved in, in this process should be changed, but it could not happen again for one night. It could happen uh, in uh, uh, involving in discussions, in uh, uh, preparing this transition, showing how it's demonstrating how it's happened in other regions, actually, and how it could be adapted. Because never mind that all the, all the regions are in transition, but the, there there are always some, something specific. It could not have it from Germany and just to put in in Bulgaria. And uh, the truth is actually, people will follow this leaders which who demonstrate that they have the courage, they have the capability, they know that this transition actually should start really from the local level because okay, uh, the new uh, new tendencies are demonstrating very well that it, it's uh, in many cases it's much more better to have the producers of energy next to the consumers of Abandoned. Never mind, we're talking about the uh, citizens, consumers, or businesses which are producing and consuming the energy without the huge uh, transition consuming grid from the term power plant to some somebody, some uh, elsewhere. And uh, starting to, to change our mindset how to produce and to, to consuming energy and the energy efficiency is also a very important point. Uh, we will support us, but for the moment, our mindset is to have huge term farm plants, huge mining complex, which provides a lot of job places secured by the state, secured by the trade unions. And um, uh, this narrative that is the uh, very strong part of the security of supply, and the national uh, security also. This is what actually is one of the main barriers that we should cross in order to be successful in the, in the next decade. Yeah, definitely, it's a matter of a paradigm shift uh, and showing that the energy transition and security of supply are two sides of the same coin. But now that we are talking about the locals, uh, I think it's a good time to bring in uh, one of the questions we received during um, the presentations. Uh, so Daniel Sudarevich is asking, how do you see the willingness of local population in highly coal-reliant regions to deploy renewable um, energy. Uh, Professor Kuslevich, maybe we can start again with you, especially since you do come from one such region and um, you work with uh, or meet people. Uh, in order to trigger paradigm change, you need a trigger. So two years ago in Bosnia-Herzegovina, the increase of the prices for industry. 20% and then additionally 
gave a signal to small and medium-sized companies that cannot rely anymore on the state or public company to provide secure and cheap energy. So we are just now in the process of boom of installing uh, photovoltaic uh, plants for self-consumption. When it will happen with the uh, local governments, with local communities, with citizens, it again depends either on a, a need, on a pressure, which might come in some countries. Yes, in Serbia, they have to increase the price of the uh, electricity per consumer four times because it's a pressure from the International Monetary Fund, or it will come in the uh, in a process of giving uh, uh, subventions uh, and, and, and support. People will uh, react on a tangible triggers, like they did react on energy efficiency when they put in the isolations and the new windows, like they reacted very well uh, on a transformation from uh, mazut to biomass and pellets. Now some of them regrets for really option for the pellets. Uh, there is a lot of talk about heat pumps now. So uh, I believe people on a tangible inputs, people will react. However, uh, they will not react just on the, you know, we need that or it will be better for you because the simple calculation shows that with subsidized prices for uh, so-called protected customers, where we have 70% uh, of electricity under the title of the protected customers, nothing, nothing really happens. So uh, it is uh, my belief that uh, the weak point is uh, political decision makers, uh, lack of discussion in the parliaments. Don't forget the European Parliament was re really the leader of the green transformation. Uh, uh, lack of knowledge of decision makers, what's really going on in Europe. And uh, now we have uh, the wake up. Uh, what did you sign? Sofia declaration, what does it mean? Uh, ah, it's probably a joke like with LCPD directive, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the most seriously considered action that is being now put on the table, even that people don't understand it too much, is a CBAM. Again, industry. Again, uh, those who take care of their profits and their, and their assets. I'm very much in favor of the uh, local communities, local energy communities. Uh, uh, I'm not in favor of uh, uh, building a photovoltaic power plant on the municipal uh, land, like in one of the municipalities I mentioned, Banovic, when you give the concession to the public power company. I mean, uh, I, would rather, I, would rather see, I would rather see involvement of the miners and, and citizens investing, in partially investing, understanding, unless they see that theirs, uh, they will not support development of renewable energy. And don't forget in the areas where we have coal in Bosnia, Herzegovina, it's only, it's only biomass and, and solar. There is no wind potential. Wind potential is on other places. So forget about using that in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. So making it personal and legal enforcement of the obligation, right? Uh, Dr. Grazova, would you like to comment on the willingness of people to um, accept renewables at large scale or? Well, think about the business point of view. Actually, a lot of companies here in the region, uh, SMEs and large companies, they are investing very actively in their own uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, capacity because wind is also not uh, often here in the region. Actually, and uh, from the other side, uh, the sun power is. Uh, um, estimated by GRC as one of the uh, most uh, appropriate in Europe to produce a huge amount of uh, solar energy. And uh, businesses are invest invest investing in such uh, capacity, never mind that the support is expected both by the uh, National uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan are not available at the moment, not in such extent that it was expected by the business. And uh, the transition plan is also not uh, available for this moment. And never mind that the businesses are invested really very actively in their own uh, solar energy uh, part in order to be independent by the coal energy, by the uh, uh, national transmission grid also, because you you know that this volatility, high volatility of the prices, they will get 
in, in crisis actually is uh, their cure, let's say, in this, in this manner. But uh, while the business has the um, uh, um, legislation approved how to do that, for the local community and its community, the legislation is delaying very, very, very much. Never mind that there is a directive on the European level. And actually for citizens, it's not possible to be consumer in Bulgaria for the moment. As I know, in Greece, they are uh, in some um, uh, rounds ahead in their legislation, but still the mindset is centric slowly uh, how to be independent producer and consumer of, of energy on your own uh, place. So uh, it could not happen on citizens level without the legislation change. Thank you so much. Uh, we are already past the planned time, but uh, we still have people, thankfully, in the, in the audience. And if you don't mind, we can go ahead maybe 10 more minutes because we do have questions uh, that we pre-received and also that we received today. So if it's okay with our speakers, maybe 10 more minutes to go ahead, please. I just should send some message to the my students because yeah, they're okay. waiting for me to, to okay. start. Well, <laughs> uh, Professor Kusovic can start answering then while you do that. We definitely. Uh, so thank you, obviously. Uh, Professor Kusovic, one of the questions we received in the chat is about the involvement of young people, of youth in the energy transition in, in the Western Balkans. And in your presentation, you touched on the brain drain. So maybe... Um, this is also a good link, uh, an important topic um, to comment. Uh, look, this new generation is very rational. Uh, they are weighing the options. Of course, uh, emotionally, they would like to stay uh, with their families. If they can uh, uh, secure good jobs and, uh, and secure the future for the families. However, the whole region, and uh, very specifically Bosnia and Herzegovina, is having uh, a big, big uh, human drain, not just the brain drain. Uh, and it, it involves every region or more and less uh, regions which do not have, uh, I would say, manufacturing production. So agricultural regions are being empty. Uh, we did prepare a plan how to involve the young people in the process, but uh, the process hasn't started yet. So, so the, you don't expect young people really to jump in and to be the leader. Uh, I will just say that uh, a key leadership, in my personal opinion, a key leadership should come from uh, uh, most responsible people in the local government. Unless you have the mayor and the, his key associates behind the process, and unless he starts knocking on the doors of the people up there, because in the region, uh, uh, in, at least in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we can climb. We have many regions, not like in Bulgaria. If you just two, we have four. Uh, you can have some some sort of initiative, but obviously a systematic approach, which will provide financial assistance and the technical assistance, should come should come from the upper level. So the role of the upper level should be uh, facilitating facilitating the process. Uh, Young people will, in my opinion, uh, watch what's going on and wait their options. Hopefully, they will find the opportunity to start some jobs uh, and to start self-employment jobs. But, you know, it's very much local economic development, experimenting. Uh, you have communities who are just good ground and fertile for such things. Mono-industrial areas and especially coal mining regions are not the best place to expect uh, such activities. Thank you. Dr. Grazeva, you mentioned your students, so you clearly um, have an insight into young people's minds and what they're thinking. Actually, uh, young people are very, very, very clever. They could shift very quickly between uh, different uh, opportunities. And if their uh, hometowns provide them such kind of opportunities to stay, to develop themselves professionally and uh, personally, they just uh, came back. I'm, I'm saying this from uh, real, 
my personal experience because here in in the city of Sarasota, we have very strong support uh, uh, from the local authorities to uh, provide conditions for young people to stay back in the city and to develop their own business, mainly in the uh, so modern IT, but it works with the support of the local government. And this uh, digital innovation hub project, which is for uh, 4 million euro funded by the European Commission and by the national uh, government, is exactly to support young people to start their own business here in the region. Support provided by as the services for uh, uh, training, for test before invest, uh, for support to funding, for networking with uh, other companies from all around uh, Europe, but not only European Union, because as I know, such kinds of clubs are also developed in Western Balkans. And actually, uh, we are um, really supported by the local authorities from the region, how to develop this um, initiative in order to attract uh, young people, not only from the region, but also from other regions who came and to develop their own business in the region of Sarasota. And it, it could support the, uh, the transition also by, and I mean from coal to clean energy, also by uh, providing digital solutions for clean hydrogen, for clean energy, testing in different uh, applications, different uh, digital solutions, how, how to be uh, approved before to go on the market, before to reach their uh, market maturity in order to be independent by the support. So venture capital funds are also uh, our partners in this uh, uh, initiative. So if, if you have uh, this support uh, on a local level by the local authorities, as the uh, professor uh, put it, okay. then it works. But without that, will lose. It seems to me that the, the human drain, the brain drain in the region, uh, never mind that the just transition plans are not even on the horizon to be approved. But because of the support and the, of the leadership of the mayor, who is a young man, actually stopped this process for the moment. For the moment, it's frozen. I'm not sure what will happen the next year or two or three. But for the moment, we have very good initiative here in, in the city. Mainly because Sarasgora is the main city in the region, and we'll see if I can Okay, thank you. Sounds promising. I think at this point we can stop. But uh, these are the topics we will definitely be discussing in the upcoming series uh, of this webinar, and uh, that also means we'll. Uh, continue discussing the questions we received today. We have them. Um, in our files now. Uh, our next session is on March 30th, when we will discuss exactly this engagement of energy stakeholders, uh, energy transition stakeholders, how and um, which to engage. So uh, please do join us again in case you haven't registered already. Do that uh, now. Irina is going to post a link in the chat box. But I'm sure you can. Uh, you'll also see this um, on the initiatives, social media, and other channels. Uh, thank you so much for finding time and in, in, in your personal energy um, to discuss this matter, even past the time we initially scheduled for the webinar. I very much look forward to hosting you again on March 30th, when, like I said, we'll be discussing uh, another topic on the energy transition, or I should say another angle of the energy transition, which is engaging stakeholders in just transition planning, who and how. Until then, stay well, keep safe, and see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you once again. Bye. Bye.